In this video, we're going to talk about audio one-shot triggers. In some games, you may want to walk through a doorway and hear some monster footsteps, or you walk through a tunnel and you hear a plane flyby overhead. In games, we have a lot of places where we just want to trigger a sound effect to play during the game. We want it to be reusable uh, and we want to be able to customize it. So I'm going to show you how to put that together. So to show you what we're going to do here, I have my FPS controller. And if I walk through this area, you're going to hear a sound effect. Right, pretty loud. We only trigger it once. We'll talk about how to do that. And we're going to make that into an actor that has a little trigger volume so that we can reuse it. So if we wanted to make multiple ones, we could pull that over there and change the sound effect that's on that one. And uh, we can make it more customizable. So let's walk through how to do that. First thing we want to do is we want to create a new blueprint actor because it is something that we want to be able to reuse across our level. A common thing to do might be to open up your level blueprints and do your one-shot triggers in here. But the problem is we have to copy paste code inside of our level and we don't really want to do that. So let's make a new actor so we can use it wherever we want. I'm going to put mine inside of a new folder that I created right here, but you can put this wherever. I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class and go to actor. So we'll call this BP underscore one shot sound trigger. Go ahead and save it, save all, or you can right click and hit save. Open it up. And the main things we're going to need here is we're going to need a box collision so that we can detect the player and we're going to need an audio component, which is where we're going to customize the sound. So let's make our box first, our box collision. Let's also make a sound, so audio right here. So add audio. And this is the audio that's going to play. And we can leave those called what they are. I think that's that's fine. Let's compile save. Now, the interesting thing about doing it this way is now I can reposition the audio in the actor if I want. So like if I wanted to play this sound behind the player, then we could customize that a little bit. Anyways, we'll get to that later. Let's compile save. Now, one thing I want to make sure of, because this is a one shot trigger, there's a lot of things that can be customized over here, but I do want to turn off auto activate. I do not want this to play whenever it exists in the world. I only want to play it when I tell it to in code. So make sure you turn this auto activate off. That is super, super important. Now, if I come over to my event graph over here, let's just get all this out of the way. Delete it. I want to detect if my box collider, this trigger area over here, I want to detect if that has been touched by the player. So to do that, I'm going to select box, this collision that we made, we'll scroll down, and we're going to see something called on actor begin overlap. This will create an event that will fire whenever another actor overlaps this component, the one that I have selected. So select box, hit begin overlap. All right, so when a player passes through, want to do something. Now, what I want to do is first detect if it's the player, because I don't want a you know, projectile to pass through and trigger it or an enemy to walk through and trigger it. This is targeted towards the player. Right click and say get player pawn, because as long as it is a pawn being controlled by the player, then it's a valid player object. Then pull off of other actor. I'm going to say equals equals. That's equal. I'm testing if the other actor that passes through this trigger volume is the player, the other thing. If that is the player, then we're going to pull off of our equals and say branch. If it is the other player, so this will return true. Let's connect this up right here too. Then we want to do something. The easiest thing to do would be to pull off of this and say play. And you'll notice that I have a lot of weird options here. You could play a sound at location, but you wouldn't be able to customize it inside the component. But that is something that uh, people do. We'll see some other things here um, linking into the components. Just be very explicit about what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to take my audio component that the designer can customize. I'm going to drag this into the scene and I'm going to pull off of this and then I'm going to say play. This means that I want to play this specific component and it'll just make sure that it is doing the correct thing. So I'll pull off of that and I'll say play. If this is the player, then I want to play this component, tell it to play. And honestly, I think this is enough to um, show you the first version of this. If I compile, save, come back in, we're not going to hear anything until we customize it. So uh, let's drop this into the scene. Drop one over here. And we can scale to resize it, for example. And if we did want to reposition our audio cue, like wanted to play something behind the player, we, we can for each different volume that we put in. So that's the nice thing about making it reusable as this one shot trigger is we can, you know, customize it in different ways on different volumes, something like that. Anyways, I'm gonna get rid of the second one. I just want to show you that you can. The problem here is if I hit play, nothing's going to happen. That's because we have not configured our audio. So let's just give it a sound effect so that we can test. 
I'm just going to use one of the built-in editor sounds. Eject from player. Okay, this is probably what you heard in the demo too. Um, but I'm going to select eject from player. You could put any sound that you have created as well. You could import that and just link it in. Uh, totally fine. Either a wave or a cue is fine. If we hit play, you're going to see something. I walk over here. It works, so that's good. But watch this. Plays multiple times. Now, if you want it to play multiple times, then you're set. If you don't want it to play multiple times, which is usually the case for one shot triggers, we want to add something called a do once node. So I'm going to open this back up and right before we play, but after we detect if it's the player, because we don't want to like have the enemy walk through and then trigger our do once and then, you know, we can't use it anymore. After we detect that it's a player, we're going to use a node called do once. And this is going to say once this passes through and we play it, lock it out in future times. So this will only happen once. We'll only play the sound once. And then other times when the player walks through, it will not get past the do once node since we've already triggered it and we should only hear once you know you could expand this if you want like you could uh, set a boolean so that you know you have a little variable trigger where the designer can decide if this is a do once or not but i'm gonna show you the simple version so let's save it hit play and try it out okay cool we can only trigger it once and this is really all i wanted to show you because now we can put this in different parts of our level we could change the location of the audio we could make this 2d or 3d just depending on how we customize it on our audio component you know it's, it's totally up to you it's just a little reusable uh, modular level mechanic that will give you a lot of capability to add audio story elements to your uh to your levels where you can trigger different events you can reuse it everywhere um, you can do a lot of really cool things with it so Hopefully this helps you out.